it's story time so i think i was around 10 years old when this happened and i was visiting my dad for the weekend and there is this girl who lived on the block from us who me and my cousin were really good friends with and her name was lupita but then one day i go to visit my cousin says oh i have beef with her and i'm like no 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 cuz we're family we got beef with her honestly don't even know what they're fighting about but no matter what i got her back so we were playing outside lupita was passing me by and i stuck out my foot and i tripped her but it wasn't even all that like she stumbled okay like she didn't face plan or nothing and so she got back up and she gave me a dirty ass look then she kept walking so then like an hour or two later me and my cousin decided to go back inside and then all of a sudden my dad walks in and he's like hey lupita's parents want to talk to you we're like oh shit so me and my cousin ran into the bathroom and we're like, all right, we got to get our story straight, bro. Like, we need to blame it on her. We didn't do nothing. We were just chilling. I don't know. She. You guys. I was finally given permission to tell this story time. Okay, so here we go. This is the reason why I don't mess with holes that you find at the beach. I'm going to be using my microphone because I love it. This is going to be one part, I hope. A few years ago, me and all my cousins went to the beach. We did normal beach things. One of my cousins really wanted to be buried completely in sand. You know how it is. So they found a pretty shallow area, began to dig, and they covered her up with just her head showing. You know, took pictures, joked around, it was, it was, it was a good time. I'd like to mention that I arrived late. By the time I got to the beach, she was already completely covered in sand. She goes, okay, I want to get out now. A bunch of us helped pull her out. When she was finally out and she was trying to take all the sand off, that's when I noticed something, something on her shorts. I was like, hey, what's that? She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, that, it's like dark brown, it's on your pants. She went to like wipe it off and then looked at her hand and realized, smeared all over her shorts was poop. Realizing what it was, she screamed and ran towards the beach. The rest of us were shocked. Somebody had dug a hole in that spot and used it as a bathroom. Yeah, never again. One time, when I was in the fifth grade and my sister was in the sixth grade, I had a crush on a boy named Luis. And she had a crush on a boy named Luis. And it was the same Luis. And then she went out of her way to date him. And that's when I knew that my sister was a whore. So does anybody have like a culturally insensitive memory from your childhood? Like, for me, I remember at a class party in, like, eighth grade, our teacher let us bring in drinks and food or whatever, and she's, she welcomed all, like, ethnic backgrounds of food. So I was like, let me bring horchata because I'm Hispanic, and, you know, I love sharing my culture even from a young age, so I brought it. But I noticed that nobody in my class wanted to drink it. And I remember these girls huddled up around the horchata that I brought, and they were just whispering. And I went up to them, and I was like, would you like to try it? And one of them was like, no, it looks like dirty water. I remember that to this day. And I remember that bitch's name. But, you know, it's okay because at lunch I met up with all, like, my black and Hispanic friends who are, you know, culturally aware. And we all had fun and had a little party of our own drinking my horchata. So tell me about your experience. Hard and blah, blah, blah. Because he has Star Wars on there, whatever. So she's like, oh my God, do you have Disney Plus? Because did you watch like The Last Jedi or whatever for Star Wars or whatever? And then he started like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, <laughs> And then guess what? What? She gave him a free drink. Oh, hell no, bitch. Oh. I'm going to tell you guys about how I learned that Latinos speak in front of white people or Americans. Now, this is something I discovered that Latinos have to do to censor their language, their native speaking language around Americans in order to not stir any controversy. So I don't really remember if I was sick or if it was like bring your kid to work day. I don't really remember what the situation was. But at the time, my dad worked for a cable company. He installed cable boxes, things like that. He would go into houses and he would do this. Now I was little and I was with him for one of these jobs. Now I speak Spanish with my parents. What we speak in the house, it was my first language. It's the language my parents are both most comfortable in. How we express ourselves. So my dad introduces himself to the customer. Says hello, explains what he's gonna do, all that jazz. And I asked my dad a question in Spanish. My dad answers me in English and I was surprised. My dad never speaks to me in English, ever. I used to get in trouble for speaking in English to him. And he was all smiley and happy when he was speaking to me too. And I was like, what the heck is going on? So then he pulled me aside. Part two come. Hello, mi gente. So two years ago, I moved to America. The first year was a disaster. I couldn't talk, I couldn't understand, whatever. So I started listening to people and repeating after them. And that's the way I learned English. I have a strong accent, but it's okay. So I can talk, but not write. <laughs> Bitch, guess what time it is? It's story time. 
So before I get into the actual story, I just need to tell you, if you're real sensitive, maybe just keep scrolling, we'll leave it at that. So this story takes place when I was in the seventh grade, and for whatever reason, for this one class, they mix the seventh graders with the eighth graders. There is this one eighth grader in particular who was kind of a fuckboy, like he was known for fucking with a bunch of girls. And something I should mention is that he had a mild case of threats. So one of his tics was that he would always be blinking a lot all the time. So he was in my class and I saw him and I asked the girl who was sitting next to me. I'm like, hey, is that so-and-so? <laughs> this girl, y'all. <laughs> she said, yeah, he always be winking at me. <laughs> y'all ready for story time? So back when I used to work at Jamba, I would leave and come back all the time. But every time I'd come back, it'd be a whole new staff. So the last time I went back, I walked up and strutted my shit because Emily with the knee is that bitch. And right off the bat, one of my coworkers, I could already tell, did not vibe with me. But I kept it pushing because I already know bitches like to hate on Emily with the knee. So whatever, as my shift is going, she keeps trying to give me an ass, telling me what to do and shit. But I just ignore her ass because I'm like, bitch, I've been here a lot longer. But whatever, I end up spilling a little bit of water on the floor. And because I'm a good fucking worker, I went to go grab the mop to go clean it. I'm cleaning it up or whatever, and this bitch starts laughing. And I'm, all right, bitch, get your giggles in, whatever. And she picks up a piece of ginger, and bitch, that shit hit me right here. So I'm like, okay, bet, now I'm gonna have to kill you. And I ask her, I'm like, yo, did you just throw that at me? She rolls her eyes and goes, nah, I meant to aim for the garbage. I said, bitch, well, unfortunately for you, you hit me. And I don't know if you know this, bitch, but you're not about to disrespect me. And she's like, you don't know who I am. I'm fucking crazy. Don't talk to me like that. I said, I don't give a fuck, bitch, and I'm Emily with a knee. I'm crazier. So you want to throw shit at me? No problema. And I grabbed that mop bucket, and I threw that shit at her. I turned that bitch into C-word. Life for part two. Story time on why I don't have friends. <laughs> so a few years ago, my boyfriend convinced me to move so he could follow his dreams and his career in Los Angeles. And I agreed, and I'm very proud for him to actually achieve. He now owns a sneaker store in Los Angeles. But unfortunately for me, I actually did not adjust well, and I was extremely depressed, and on top of that, I'm an extreme introvert, so I'm very shy, and I don't know how to make friends, so I was extremely lonely because he was always busy running a business. But then we moved to an apartment in West Hollywood, and I became best friends with my neighbor. We shared a wall, and we did everything together. I literally thought I found my sister. She knew the passcode to my door. She'd wake me up in the morning. We'd have dinner together. We'd literally do everything. I cannot even explain to you. Sadly, some things don't work out and me and my ex broke up and I decided to come back home. Not only did I have to deal with the heartbreak, but I had to deal with my best friend sleeping with my ex and then claiming it was rape when everyone found out. It was so hard. I literally thought I was.